Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Let us hear the words of God. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his word and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other woman with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Amen. The resurrection is the greatest event in history. Resurrection is the greatest event in history. Nothing can top it. Because you see, Jesus rising from the dead conquered death because he took care of our sin. It is the conquering of our sin that we are made new. The wages of sin is death. But because Jesus rose from the dead, we no longer are going to die. We will be living with Jesus for all eternity. So this cannot be compared to any event in any history at any time. Resurrection, Jesus rising from the dead, is and must be the most important and prominent event in all of history all of humanity are to treasure this event because without Jesus rising from the dead, the sin problem would not be taken care of and we wouldn't have any hope. But thanks be to God, Jesus rose from the dead. We are here to celebrate, and not just on Easter Sunday morning, but every Sunday because he rose on the first day of the week. First day of the week is very significant because Jesus said he'll be in the ground three days. He was took in on Friday. He rose on Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's three days. And they begin Sunday, 6 p.m. the night before. So he was there on Sunday for about 12 hours already. First day of the week, people of God have been meeting to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we do the same. 2,000 years later, we are continuing to celebrate the risen Lord. It is the greatest event. It is the cornerstone and foundation of the gospel. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 tell us, you must believe in the resurrection of Jesus in order for you to be saved. Resurrection. It is sometimes really intriguing that in seminaries where they train pastors to preach the gospel, in certain seminaries in this country, only 50% of those seminaries believe in the resurrection. How could that be possible? Without the resurrection, there is no gospel. This is the pinnacle, this is the apex, this is the central message of the gospel. In fact, the entire Bible is pointing towards the coming Messiah and the blessed resurrection of the Lord. Even way back in the book of Job, Job even prophesied that he was looking forward to the blessed Redeemer, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Death does not end our existence. Death is only the doorway to eternity. So many people fear death, but death is only a pathway, a doorway. You open the door to eternity. The minute that you die, you will be with God. We do not believe in soul sleeping. 
We do not believe that our bodies, along with our souls, will be in the ground for all, I don't know how many millennia, and then eventually when Jesus returns, then we will rise. We are confident that when we die, to be absent from our body is to be with the Lord instantaneously, simultaneously, in a twinkling of an eye. So if you are sitting here this morning, you know you'll be resurrected, you know you'll be in heaven, but you are worried that you will be decaying in the ground for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. And that can frighten you. It frightens me. But the Bible tells us that we will be with the Lord today. We will be with him in paradise. We are guaranteed of this because Jesus rose again on the third day as he said. And because we believe in Jesus, we also believe in the word of God. And the word of God tells us that we can have security in believing this. This is not a story, a fable. This is not a myth. This and all the writers of the Bible, they were so convinced, especially Apostle Paul. He says, I am confident of this. And so I want you to hear today's message with that assurance already. Jesus was dead, absolutely dead. Some people believe that Jesus never died. Some people think that Jesus was on the cross and because there was a cool breeze that he somehow revived himself, he got down from the cross. You remember he was whipped in his back. His back was literally shredded and he had no liquid. He was bleeding. He had everything just exhausted out of him and to escape the guards, and to appear to people as nothing is wrong. This is the most ridiculous story that they've been telling. They've been telling lies. They even told the guards. They gave them money, the Roman officials, gave them money to say that the body of Jesus was stolen. Some of you rather would believe that Jesus' body was stolen or maybe some dogs came and ate it, you might believe in all kinds of hoax. I would rather believe what the Bible says because it tells us, matter of frankly, that in, on the first day of the week, it says in verse 1, but on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices, but they prepared Back in chapter 23, there were women, at the end of chapter 23, beginning with verse 50, there were women who followed this person by the name of Joseph and Nicodemus because Joseph wanted to give Jesus a proper burial. In those days, if you were crucified and you were a traitor of some sorts, you were just thrown in the streets for the vultures to come and eat your eyes and your flesh and eat your muscles, leaving nothing but skeleton. That was the way that these criminals were thrown out. But if you were among the rich, you were given a proper burial. Pilate, the governor, did not want Jesus to have a proper burial. So for Joseph to go up to Pilate was very scary thing. He must have been shaking in his boots, kind of like in the Old Testament, Moses going up before Pharaoh saying, let my people go. So Joseph goes to Pharaoh, could I take down Jesus from the cross, take him to the grave, the tomb. It is my own tomb. No one has been there. The rocks are clean. There is no stink. There's nothing, no odor of any kind. There is nothing related to death, may I put Jesus in that tomb? And God allowed that to happen because that was to a prophecy. He was not, God did not want his only begotten son to be thrown in the streets for the birds to come and eat his flesh. He made sure that his son was preserved and was given a proper burial. The Bible tells us that they, these two men, brought 100 pounds of spices and ointment as they prepared the burial. And these women followed them, but they did not go in because they were still in shock. They just simply observed, but they did not go in watching these two men prepare the body of Jesus. The next day was Sabbath. By the way, that Sabbath is the officially last Sabbath 
because on Sunday the next day, the Sabbath will be done away and that there will be no more observance of anything related to Sabbath. And the, Old, the New Testament writers tell us that there must not be any of that Sabbath observance because we are now beginning a new life in Jesus. So on Saturday, they observe the Sabbath, these women, and they prepare their own ointments and spices, and they went first thing at dawn. It was still dark. It says here in verse 1, on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And in verse 2, and they found the stone rolled away. In the other Gospels, we have these women talking to themselves, saying, how are we going to get rid of this stone that is so, so huge? Some estimate that this is about two tons, that would mean 4,000 pounds, on a down grade. It was blocking the entrance of the grave, the tomb. These women were discussing among themselves, how are we going to get rid of that large, huge stone? When they got there, they were shocked to find that the stone was removed. It wasn't there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the first thing that I want us to notice is that the tomb was empty. All the four gospel writers talk about the resurrection. Every one of them talk about and give us the evidence that Jesus was not there. He is not there. So I titled today's message, He is not here. He is not here. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? There were two angels appearing as dazzling white apparel. They were bright and dazzling and these two men told these women, why are you looking for the living among the dead? This is a cemetery. The living is not here. These women went there. They found Jesus' body not being there. They were not completely convinced. They did not realize of the resurrection. All they know is that the body that was supposed to be there wasn't there. All four gospel writers tell us that the body was not there. They tell us that it happened. They cannot tell us how it happened because they were not there when Jesus rose from the dead. All they can tell us is what they saw, that the body was not in the grave. Another thing that these women did not see were these guards. These guards were put there, according to the Gospels, in other places. They wanted to make sure that when Jesus was alive, there was a rumor going on that he would rise in three days. And so they wanted to make sure that Jesus was in the grave. So they had the emperor's signature, if you will. They had a seal of the governor, the Caesar, and the king, and the seal was on the grave. Right there, nobody can break that seal, and guards were protecting it, and another Gospel tells us that there was a violent earthquake so, so terrible that the Bible tells us that these guards fell into some kind of a coma. They fell dead. And when they woke up, they realized what was happening. The grave was wide open. There was an angel, two angels, two of them. Everything is shaking, and the body of Jesus is gone. They have no reason to be there. They ran, they fled for their lives. They were protecting the grave because Jesus' body was there, but they do not need to be there because Jesus was no longer there. That's an evidence, that's the most convincing evidence. Jesus' body is not in the grave. There is no resurrection in the world religions. There is no resurrection in Buddhism. There is no resurrection in Islam. There is no resurrection in other religions. All they have is coming back, coming back, reincarnating. It is not, it is not resurrection. It is recycling. They are just recycling themselves, but Jesus is the only being who actually resurrected himself. The reason that the stone was rolled away was not for Jesus to come out. He does not need the stone to be removed. As you remember, he would appear in front of his disciples who are hiding, by the way. He would appear in front of them right through the walls. 
he would go right through the walls because he was totally, totally changed to a different body form. We too will have that body as well. The reason that the stone was rolled away was not for Jesus to come out, but for these women and disciples to come in and see for themselves. It is still open today. The grave is empty. Some people think that these women went to the wrong tomb. Think again, because they were there two nights ago. They followed the two men, so they knew exactly where the tomb was. They did not make a mistake. Some of you sitting here still have a hard time. We have the disciples, once the women, I witness the grave being empty. They ran to tell the disciples. At first they were frightened, but the Bible tells us that they were joyful. They were filled with joy. Their fear was replaced with joy. Why not? They were so disappointed that their Lord had just died, that their hopes have all been vanished. But now, is there a possibility that he really was telling the truth? Is he really, possibly? Is he alive? They were so full of joy, they went to tell the apostles they did not believe them, but Peter and John. They decided, the Bible says that Peter got up and started to run, but he is a physically bigger man than John, who is a younger man of the two. So Peter started out first, but John outran him to the tomb. But John is a timid man. He calls himself the disciple that Jesus loved. So he gets to the tomb first, but at the entrance, he looks, but he doesn't go in. Peter comes in a few seconds later, pushes him aside. He runs right in, and he sees, number one, Jesus not being there, and the linen cloth and the, the, the thing that would cover the face, the cloth, they were totally separated. Let me ask you a question. If you are a body thief, and guards are there, perhaps they're falling asleep, you first had to break the seal, which means that you were going to be killed, and you have to roll that stone without the guards noticing it. And let's just say that you tiptoed yourself in to the grave. Are you going to unwrap the cloth and the, the linens? And are you going to fold them neatly and you would place them separately? The body wrapping separately and the head wrapping separately? If you are robbing somebody's home, are you going to put neatly back everything? I think not. You don't have time. All you are going to do is just put them together or any which way in a very sloppy way and you try to get out of there as fast as you can. The Bible tells us, and these are evidences, that Jesus indeed rose again from the dead, that nobody stole his body. In fact, if the body was stolen, all they had to do is just provide the body. Hey, we have the body. They would not have died for a lie. Nobody dies for a lie. You don't become a martyr for a lie. Every one of the disciples were martyred. Some died crucifixion upside down, having the cr cross upside down. Some were beheaded. They were all martyred for what? For a lie? I don't think so. These disciples were wimps. They all fled. John was the only one at the foot of the cross. They were in fear. They are not going to go out there and go to the grave and try to steal the body. We know that Jesus rose again from the dead because, number one, the grave is empty. The angel's testimony saying, why are you looking for the living among the dead? We also have the testimony of the women. They go and tell these disciples. John describes these angels, and Matthew and Mark say one angel spoke. There were two angels, but only one spoke. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Don't you know that the living one, that death could not hold him? Ladies and gentlemen, the disciples said, you women are out of your minds. It's impossible for a man to come back to life. What is impossible is death 
being able to hold on to Christ. You cannot hold Christ. Death does not have any hold on Jesus. Therefore, you and I also have hope of eternal life. We too will be resurrected. Not that we will spend eternity thousands and thousands of years later. We will be resurrected into a body in a twinkling of an eye. We too will be resurrected. We will be spending eternity with him. And that is our hope. That is what brings us joy. That is what gives us enthusiasm and excitement. So often, the worship services on Sunday morning all across the globe is a very gloomy, doom type of atmosphere. We call it celebration. Certainly Easter Resurrection Sunday worship ought to be a celebration, not a funeral. Maybe Good Friday, but even Friday was a Good Friday. Sunday morning is when Jesus rose from the dead. We ought to have enthusiasm. We ought to have some bounce in our walk. We ought to have some jump, a hop. We ought to be joyful in our countenance. We ought to be saying to one another as these women were so filled with joy, hey, guess what? I don't understand, but the grave is empty. Could it be possible that Jesus rose again from the dead? In fact, another gospel tells us that Jesus actually went ahead and met them on the way while the women were going to the disciples. While the women were going to the disciples, Jesus transported himself and met them and just talked to them. And so these women knew as they were going to the disciples and went there, they were so enthusiastic and they were saying, guess what, our Lord has risen, he is alive. Are you crazy, they all said. But we need to give credit to Peter and John. Again, they saw, and the Bible tells us in verse 12, but Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloth by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. They did not know what to do next. Yes, they were happy. Yes, they were amazed, but they did not know what steps to take next. So the Bible tells us they went home. Home. Brothers and sisters in Christ, after you hear the message, don't just keep it to yourself and go home. What an amazing God we have. You want to go out and share the good news. These disciples eventually did. That is why Jesus appeared to them for 40 days before he ascended into heaven. He spent time with them, ate with them, walked with them, talked with them, thought with them. Even though he had a glorious body, he acted, behaved in a manner similar to all of us. He appeared to his disciples. One meaningful thing that he did, he ate fish with them. And it gives us great hope that when we get to heaven, we could eat not for strength or sustenance, but simply for enjoyment. Isn't there anybody here that wants to eat something just because you enjoy eating food? Wouldn't it be great if we did not have to worry about calories or anything like that? We are going to have food in heaven because we have food when the world first began in the Garden of Eden. We will have tremendous time of fellowship. Jesus makes sure whenever he gathered with his disciples, there was breaking of bread, which we will do momentarily. The book of Revelation tells us, I knock your door, and if you hear my voice and open, I will go in and I will eat with you and you will eat with me. The Bible is full of fellowship by way of eating and fellowshipping. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 13 to 22. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise. If it is true that the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, 
Not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. The purpose for Jesus' rising from the dead is not to diminish the heartaches in this life only. If it were only to remedy the heartaches and pains and suffering in this life, it would be much less than what God is actually promising. We are waiting to enter heaven with great, great joy. We meet on Sunday morning as we remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every Sunday morning, first day of the week, we come celebrating, remembering, proclaiming. We are going to be partaking in the Holy Communion, which basically serves two. One, to remember. Secondly, to proclaim. We remember what Christ has done. We remember what Jesus has done on the cross. Do this in remembrance of me, Jesus says. And we also proclaim until he comes. We proclaim the gospel until he returns. These disciples eventually saw and believed. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you are a visitor here, if you are watching us online, if you are a skeptic today, why don't you look at the evidence of the empty tomb and the testimonials by the women and the angels and also believe. Unless you believe on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, you cannot attain salvation. This is the grand daddy of them all. Resurrection is why we meet. You throw out the resurrection, there goes Christianity. Resurrection is at the very heart of what we believe. That's what the Gospels teach. That's what the epistles explain. That's what the Revelation glorify. That's what the Old Testament have been telling, foretelling all that time. Everything centers around Christ. Because he rose, we too have the hope of rising with him. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ and have eternal life. Amen.